Hey everyone, it's Patricia from TarantulaHeaven.com. We have Miss Spidey making a lot of movement today, which is amazing. She's been walking around her tank, so I think that she's gonna put on a little show for you guys today. Um, please excuse the mess that her enclosure is right now. We had a leak in her beautiful water dish, and that's why her substrate's all wet. So I will be doing a tank change soon, uh, unfortunately, due to that. But um, she's very active today, which is amazing because this is what usually happens when it becomes spring. Spidey gets um, some nice energy and she gets out of her hibernation. Anyway, today I wanted to talk to you about an awesome post that I saw and I did a little bit more investigating. I saw a post on Facebook about a tarantula annual exam. Um, this was done at, at the UC Davis School of Veterinary Medicine. And it was actually from a 2017 Facebook post, but I saw it come across my timeline. Someone shared it in a tarantula group and I had to check it out um, because they did a bunch of really cool things. Um, they x-rayed the tarantula. They used a Doppler ultrasound tool to listen to the tarantula's heart rate. So I definitely wanted to let you guys know about that and show you some pictures from the post and the experience. I have a full the full article linked below in case you're curious about it. But I thought that was so cool. Um, in doing a little bit of research, I found out that this was done uh, at the Sacramento Zoo in California. I think this was part of an exotic animals exam. They had, ex they had examined a bunch of different exotic animals during this day. It was kind of like a learning thing because there were windows into the exam room for the students to witness. Um, so I thought that was really, really cool. Um, I think visitors were allowed to look in the chair there too. She's being very active. I mean, she's probably hungry. Um, it turned out that they just did one tarantula. It was an eight year old female and they examined her because she had a lesion on her underside. And they did have to take precautions because as you guys know, with the urticating hairs, the vets and the students all had to wear protective gears to protect from the hairs. So they probably had to wear eye goggles and gloves just to make sure that if the tarantula kicked hairs that nobody would uh, be victim to those very irritating hairs. And they did talk a little bit about what kind of procedures they did to the tarantula. So in the article, it says that the tarantula got a full physical exam, which I really wish there were a video about it, but I couldn't find one. A full physical exam. They also did a blood draw of the hemolymph, which is tarantula blood. Um, and they did an analysis of that blood and they also did radiographs. Um, there were quite a few comments about the blood draw and I couldn't find much information about how that was done, but I find that interesting because we know that tarantula blood does not clot the way that human blood clots. Like we know that if you guys have a tarantula who does get an injury, you have to basically clot their blood for them. So I am not sure what precautions they were taking. Um, I know that they did say in the article that they used a tiny needle. So maybe it was so small that there was not really a need for that, but, um, that is interesting. And I'm also curious about what they were doing in the analysis. Like does tarantula blood have the same properties or compounds as our blood? So like minerals, vitamins, stuff like that. I think that that's really interesting to think about. She is being too much right now. They also, as part of the physical exam, they checked this tarantula's muscle tone um, by pushing her legs down, each of her legs to kind of check the pressure, which is really cool. Um, I guess that's kind of like how the doctor checks your reflexes or they kind of push down on your arm to kind of see your reflexes and your strength. Um, and they also checked her heart rate using a very tiny ultrasound device, which was like the size of a fingernail. Um, and they said that the Tarantula's heart rate sounded like a little wave, like a whoosh whoosh type of uh, sound, which I think is adorable. I really wish they had published a video on this with all of the different things that they did. Um, and they also did do some sedating of the tarantula because I know that some of you are thinking, how do you give a tarantula an exam? Um, they did put the tarantula in a plastic container to sedate her and they used a soaked cotton ball 
um, that was soaked in it and aesthetic so that um, she could be chill. So I thought that was very, very interesting. Um, I have the article linked below in the description in case you guys want to read it and learn a little bit more. But I think this is so cool. I love that vets are being trained and training students in exotics medicine. I think it's awesome. Um, many of you know that exotic veterinarians are far and few be between. Um, most of us in our hometowns will not have a vet for exotic animals. So we're kind of like the first line of treatment in case anything happens to our tarantulas. Um, but I really love this and I hope that they will publish videos as we actually get more into tarantula studies because I think that just learning about how they used a teeny tiny ultrasound and, and did a blood draw is so interesting. Um, it really does make you think about um, these creatures and how their bodies work. And she is just being so cool and impressive right now. Anyway, <laughs> um, before I get completely distracted by Spidey, um, I will let you guys go. Thank you for joining me. Let me know what you think about the tarantula exam. And if you guys actually have any experiences with bringing your tarantulas to an exotics doctor, I would love to hear about it and you know what kind of things that they'll do. I think that's super cool. Anyway, I'll see you guys next week for Tarantula Tuesday. Bye-bye.